Hello guys, my name is Sunny Soaps. Today I'm going to show you a really simple 1.19.0 Warden Hostile Mob Switch Cage, which I believe is the simplest mob switch cage so far. If you want to build one in future versions, please check if there's any technical changes about Warden that could put the cage out of work. Same as Weathers and Shokers, Wardens won't despawn even when all the players are 100 and 28 blocks away from them, and they could still spawn even if there are too many hostile mobs in the overworld. And of course, they take up the hostile mob cap. However, wooden mob switch need neither weather scatter skulls nor another overworld shulker form, which makes wooden an ideal mob for hostile mob switch in 1.19. In order to build the mob switch, you need a skulk shrinker that's naturally generated in the deep dark biome. You can tell whether a skulk shrinker is capable of summoning wardens by the patterns on the top of it. If it spins clockwise and it's relatively bright, that means it's a naturally generated one. Otherwise, if it spins anti-clockwise and it's relatively dim, that means it can't summon wardens. A naturally generated Skulk Shrinker can summon Wardens on any blocks with solid top surface that is not covered by water or lava, you know, 11 x 13 x 11 cube centered on the Shrinker, which is shown in the video as the redstone block frame. To summon Warden in that case, you can stand on the Shrinker so that every 10 seconds the game will try to spawn a Warden. But the attempt would fail if there's another warden within approximately 32 blocks. So you should attract the warden away as fast as possible or just teleport them away by nether portal as soon as they spawn inside it. That idea was raised by that guy on Bilibili. To avoid the wardens from despawning, in current Minecraft version 1.19.0, you only need some noises regardless of its source. So I just clocked some iron truck doors along the corridors that the warden would go through and also at the mob storage section. You can use whatever blocks you like to make no noises like bells. For the mob storage section, I used a bucket of water to float all the mobs up to their final stop so that other mobs could walk into the same block before being pushed up. However, it's not a good idea to stack a thousand of wardens in entity loaded chunks so, the mob story section also has a lazy loaded chunk version, at the bottom of which I placed a scaffolding which serves the same purpose, where wardens walk across the entity loaded chunk border into a lazy loaded one, they are considered to be climbing, so that another warden could be pushed into the same block. It's Scorpio who remind me of using scaffolding when I was designing the cage. The scaffolding above the water is used to prevent wardens from climbing, and a piece of a vine could also serve the same purpose. The slab at the top could make sure that when wardens climb to the top, their feet are halfway in the scaffolding or vine. As mentioned above, there are another two versions of the cage, which teleports the wardens to the nether as soon as they spawn in the nether portal, and then stores the mob in the lazy loaded chunks by the portal, which means the game will not experience massive lag even when you've stored a thousand of them. The only difference is that one for overworld, another for the nether. As to single players or small servers, you can simply use the basic one. But for large servers, it couldn't be a good idea to use a basic one anymore, because wardens could actually cause more lag than the same amount of weathers. Also, for the basic one, you had to wait the warden to be flushed away before summoning another one. If you make some noises while AFK the basic cage, there's no guarantee that the warden won't target at you. So it's recommended that a fake player is here to AFK if possible. If you want to make noises while AFK, make sure that there's no wardens on the spawning platform. For the other two advanced cages, you can place the mob spawning portal anywhere within the spawning cube and the 20 blocks of spawning area is enough for most spawn attempts to succeed. But please make sure that there is no other solid top surface available in the area, especially the upper side of the nether portal. The portal loader should be in the same chunk with the mob portal, which could be something difficult to keep them separate from each other. 
Most importantly, you must store the wardens at the nearest block to the nether portal, making sure that the wardens are in the scaffolding as soon as they walk into the lazy loaded chunk. Lastly, for the Overworld Pro one, there are some extra things to take note of. Firstly, make sure that the mobs are stored out of your simulation distance. Secondly, the nether tunnel should cross chunk border once only. Otherwise, you should keep this region loaded by either a chunk loader or another fake player. Lastly, after you've got enough mobs, please keep the chunk loader working for a while before you get back to the nether to switch it off to ensure that all the wardens are teleported back to the overworld. Since the wardens could only flow in lava quite slowly, it could take wardens more than a minute to teleport back to the overworld, so there is a little chance that they stranded in the portal because of the 15 second portal cooldown. Okay, that's all. Thanks for watching.